All righty, welcome to the PSPS is Play Bullshit Podcast. I'm your host, Coach TPS, and by the way, my coach here is Andrew Arenas, double is. Yes. And uh, we're back. We took a little break. Yeah, what, last what, what happened last week? That wasn't a break. It was a, it was a, uh, what's it called? Surprise break. <laughs> a surprise break. Yeah. I mean, I will have to admit, a lot did happen last week. Yeah. I, I had I no, 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 I'll let you go first. Oh, yeah, I had late class, and then I had to come back home, fix some things. I, f- I think my computer was updating or something. And all kind of little things just kept popping up <coughs> at the C2. So it was just kind of like... I got the, it was last I week. I had to help my friend move his stuff into his apartment, so that was yeah. fun. Yeah. But yeah, basically just a lot of stuff kind of got in the way last week, so it was just kind of like getting late and just didn't get around to it. Uh, no, then overall, this is the first time we've talked in a while. Yeah. So it's just, you know, school, man. School's getting us. Thanks, we got that. Mm, for me, not really. <laughs> Things have been... I'm, I'm like riding the tide. Like, you're on a really good boat ride. You're just kind of like riding... Or, like, you're on the, you know, like, uh, water parks. You're just riding the the little current. Mm. Yeah, see, I don't have that because I'm in my last semester, so there's a lot of stuff to get done. Exactly. And all that. So, anyway, we are back this week with episode 76, I believe. Mm-hmm. 76. And uh, got a lot of news to go over since news from last week, news from this week. Um, just kind of going over things. Um, so we had a delayed episode, so why not go running with that theme and announce a bunch of delays from this past two weeks? Oh no, we've had a bunch of game. We had a couple of game delays. Uh, one of which was one that I said was not going to happen, and it happened. Um, what was going to happen? So I said this game would not get delayed, and it did get delayed. This is one of my things I was saying. Um, I Because w- I was wrong about Final Fantasy XV, because I remember saying that game would not get delayed. Oh. It did. Um, you know, because they had the whole announcement event thing. Yeah. To be like, this game is coming out September 25th, and then now it's delayed to November 25th or something like that. Um, but no, the game that got delayed was The Last Guardian got delayed. Again, again, which I did not, which was a game I did not uh, see getting delayed because it was, um, you know, it was that game that for so long was put on the back burner for so long, and they finally announced it coming for 2016. Then they said it's coming in October, and mm-hmm. I was just like, "That's it. They're not going to delay it because this is a game that's been developed for so long that there's no way they would push it back anymore, right? Because it's they wouldn't announce a date unless they were sure, right." Well, no, it got delayed. It's now coming. It's not a significant delay. It's got pushed back about about two months. It's now coming December six, around the time of uh, Final Fantasy fifteen. Yeah, it's about a week or so after Final Fantasy fifteen. Um, so yeah, there's that delay. And then did you? Um, I don't think this is everywhere, but did you see like the price dropped for the Last Guardian. Really? Like on Amazon, like it's listed for fifty dollars on Amazon, and then if you have the Prime, you can get it for forty. Hmm. So it's kind of weird that this is like a first party Sony game, and it's kind of getting a discount from a major retailer like that. I mean, what is the digital pre-orders? Uh, I don't think they started digital pre-orders for Last Guardian. Oh, they must have. Yeah, it's it's got to be there. No, I mean no. Sony's been waiting last minute to, for some of these pre-orders. They're not, they're not trying. They're trying to like step away from what we talked about many episodes ago about how like games were like a year in advance you could pre-order. I um, remember for the longest time of how you were able to pre-order like Uncharted. Until Dawn. Yeah, uh, Until Dawn and Uncharted Four. <laughs> you can like pre- <laughs> you were gonna get that in, you know, before anyone else. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, they've been shorting the window to, I think, maybe a month or two. Because, like, for example, like, X- XCOM 2 comes out at the end of the month. And they just now opened pre-orders this past week mm-hmm. for digital. Yeah. Um, so, I think they are trying to lower that window because they don't – because they know that their thing is screwy where you have to pay the 60 up front. And then they don't want – I don't know. Um, <sighs> so, it's weird. So, I think they're trying to lower that window. Because, I mean, we saw this, I think, two weeks ago when they another game that got delayed, uh, Gran Turismo Sport got delayed. <laughs> Another year with Sony with nothing. 
yeah, that game was going to come out in November. Now it's coming out 2017. They didn't say when, they just said 2017. And um, they were actually refunding people's pre-orders for it. People who digitally pre-ordered it. Wow. They were actually refunding saying that the game has been delayed to 2017. Um, sorry for the inconvenience. Here's your you know, pre-order uh, fee back of $60 or whatever. Um, so, yeah, I, again, I think it's just Sony trying to lower this like window of like pre-ordering. You know, They don't want you to pay $6 for something that might not come out for another year or so. Right. Um, but I don't know if Grand Theft Auto can delay a whole year. It's probably still going to be, I would assume, first half of 2017. Mm-hmm. But we shall see. At least. At least, yeah. Um, what else? But that's a bummer, though, about Grand Theft Auto 4. No, 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 no. We got to talk about Grand Theft Auto 4 okay. a little bit yeah. because this is another year, once again, at least you're counting Last Guardian and whatnot, but. With Sony with nothing again for the, uh, for the for the fall for the for the fall. I mean, you know, Uncharted was the casualty last year, um, and then you know it got delayed numerous times, mm-hmm. only twice really. But uh, this one is uh, unfortunate. I mean, uh, Grinch's support, you know, was supposed to have the VR. Yeah, well, that's the thing I was going to get to. Um... So yeah, that was my thing for Grand Theft Auto Sport. The reason I was excited for it was because it was going to be VR support. Yeah. Um. So that was going to be you know one less VR game because that's kind of Sony's big thing for the fall is VR. You know, mm. like that's their big thing. They're kind of focused on that and the PlayStation Pro. So with the, the VR and the VR lineup, and then Last Guardian as a you know first party game. Um. So, but they actually announced I think today or yesterday that Grand. Um, Drive Club VR is coming. Ooh, Drive Club VR. It's coming October 13th, launching with PlayStation VR. Uh, it will retail for thirty nine ninety nine because this is a separate game from Drive Club. Drive uh, Club getting the spotlight again, away from Gran Turismo. But they said it will. It's going to cost thirty nine ninety nine, launching with um, the PlayStation VR, and it's going to have one hundred and fourteen tracks available. Yeah, they, they added a boatload of tracks to Drive tracks. Club, so, mm-hmm. you know, it's uh, going to be quite big. And there will be new tracks that are featured in the VR game, and they said those new tracks will be updated for free into the main game, so if you have that. And they also say if you own the Season Pass for Drive Club, you'll get a discount for the VR version. Ooh. So wow. that's some neat stuff there. Um, yeah, so that's, that's cool. Again, so, that, so you will have a driving game available at launch. Um, oh, yeah. But... And this this is actually really exciting. This is something I wanted to bring up too. So speaking of um, the uh, the, the um, oh God, I can't talk. <laughs> Drive Club VR. So um, why do notes take so long to load on here? The, on your on your new phone? Yes, my new uh, iPhone Seven. My I'm well, maybe because these notes are left over from my old phones. So they're just not loading right when I'm trying to click the links. Maybe you got a lot in that cloud. Yeah. I'm trying to load the thing. Why is that new? We're all good. I'm figuring this out. Don't worry. <laughs> On your new phone. How? Like I said, I don't. Like I said, I think it's because these are old notes and I don't know how to open them. Why can I open this? I want. Oh, there it goes. I'm trying to figure out how to open a link from the notes on iPhone 7. And it's. I don't know why it's so difficult. I don't know. I don't know. I, I didn't click that one. Sorry, having some technical difficulties here. It's okay. I'm gonna, we're going to get through this. No, oh, don't worry. It's, at least we're not glitching out or anything. No, I'm just trying to get this damn link open. Because what the news item I'm trying to pull up is, I need to pull up the list. Uh, they announced that, because I, I announced this on our last episode, that the PlayStation VR headset's going to come with a demo disc. Yes. Well... They announced that in the U.S., the demo disc will actually come with 18 demos, eight more than the list I read off last week. Oh, last boy. Um, I'm trying to get the damn list to load. There you go. You got to double tap it. There you go. <laughs> Figured out how to use the links. Anyway, yeah, the um, the U.S. demo disc will include uh, 18 demos, including Alumenti. I don't know what that one is. Uh mm. A L L U M E T T E, um, 
Uh, it's going to have a Battle Zone demo on it. Ooh. That's the one with the tanks. It's going to have a Dry Club VR demo on it. So you get to try out that uh, VR, um, Dry Club VR before you get to play it. Um, the, the E Valkyrie uh, demo. Um, you know, G N O G. Don't sure forget that one. Mm. Oh, they're actually going to have a demo for the Harmonix music game. Oh, good. Because it's just called Harmonix Music VR, but there's going to demo for that on there. Uh, they're going to have the Headmaster demo. That's the one you can like play soccer and stuff with your face. With your uh, face. With your face. Here They Lie. I think that's that horror game. Here They Lie. It looks, looks scary. Well, Resident Evil 7. I'm getting there. Um, they're going to have a Job Simulator demo. Uh, VR Worlds demo, which will be the uh, Shark Oh, yes. That's the one I'm looking forward to. I was about to say Shark Tank. It's like, yes, it's virtually you trying to sell items. Sell oh, stuff. I get to be an entrepreneur. Yes, you get to pitch your product in VR and just be like, look, I'm trying to sell this. I'm out. I'm, Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> like in your VR headset trying to convince these. That'd be fun. Yeah, it would be. There yeah. you go. We're going to get <laughs> going to start pitch. We're going to pitch that a pitch of this Shark Tank VR game. I'm sure they would all be really into it. They're gonna. <laughs> no one's gonna go out on that one. Well, I I don't know. There was one guy on Shark Tank one time pitching uh, like a V that silly VR like like you're you're running around with it too. Like you're on the thing. Oh, you're like on the um like the treadmill. <laughs> yeah, and you're like running, and they yeah. said no to that. Well, I mean, it's a big setup. Like you could only put this in like certain areas. You know, it's just kind of a big setup. Yeah, they were like they appreciated the VR. They just uh, the like that extra equipment just didn't do it for them. So that's why they were out. That's what I'm just saying though. Like we can bring this to them and be like, we want to make a VR game of this show where people can be here in first person pitching ideas to you. Yeah, I mean it's a popular show on ABC, so maybe they take it. Yeah. Ooh, that's a show I could watch on Fridays. Well, there you go. <laughs> you got your Friday. Yeah, I got my Friday show. I got a show every day of the week. There you go. Getting your TV schedule ready. <laughs> Getting um, my TV schedule. Anyway, continuing the uh, demo list. Here, this one's exciting. They're going to have the Resident Evil 7 demo on there. So you'll be able to play that in VR. You know um, what VR game I wish? Well, yeah, you know what? Just read the rest of them. <laughs> we'll go to that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm excited though the Resident Evil 7 demo. Because I know the Resident Evil 7 demo is available, but it was never confirmed if it was going to be updated to be VR, you know, once the VR comes out. Yeah. So this is cool that um, it's going to be you know there the VR demo so you're able to play it in VR so it's gonna mm. be, it's gonna be fun to try out. Uh, they're gonna have a Res Infinite demo. Ooh. Uh, they're gonna have a Rigs Mechanized Combat League. That's the one you. Know, yes, the Rigs. Sense. Yeah, so you get the demo of that. Uh, they're gonna have Thumper. <laughs> Thumper, I like the name of that one. Thumper, you play as a rabbit. Thumper. Thumper. Uh, you could uh, Tumble VR. Uh, Until Dawn, Rush of Blood demo. Ooh. Um, I have to read this. I've read this one wrong before out loud. Wayward Sky. Yeah, Wayward Sky. I I say Sky <laughs> Skyward Sword. That's how I read it sometimes. Oh. Skyward Sword's coming to VR. What? Um, and then finally, uh, Within will be uh, also on the demo disc. Oh, Within. Yeah. So this is really this is a really good demo disc. Like, there's 18 games here. Um, you know, I mean, they they probably be short, but at least you'll have all this here. That's most of the a good a good portion of the VR lineup. Like at least the launch and kind of what's coming. You know, uh-huh. so yeah. I'm really excited for this. Excited for this thing. Yeah, the, certainly <laughs> looks like a good VR disc. Mm-hmm. Excited to play Resident Evil Seven demo in VR. Yeah, but so, you don't need the disc for that. You need to download it. Well, that's what I'm saying, though. I don't know if the one you download is VR compatible or not. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So, you know. Yeah. It's all good. But uh, what are you saying? Is there a certain VR game you're going to say? Talk yeah. About? I wish Battlefield 1 was VR. <laughs> 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 that's all I'm going to say. I mean, like, at least the campaign. Like, I wish that was VR. Or you know, you know how they're doing the battle the battlefront experience? Like, well, how come they couldn't do a Battlefield One VR experience? They might, because I mean, that seems what a lot of these games are doing. I think we're not to that point yet, where we're going to get the full on first person shooters in VR just yet. Yeah, you know, like Call of Duty or anything like that. So we're just getting these like test experiments. Like for Star Wars Battlefront, it's like 
oh, get the VR experience, and you play that one mission where you're in the X-Wing, you know, in VR. And, and then there's the Batman Arkham game that's just like, you know, a test. It's not really a full game. Yeah, but I mean, you're still doing stuff. You're still throwing batarangs, you're still investigating and doing that. But I'm just talking about like these little experience things that are added on to a main game that's not VR. You know, mm-hmm. like for Battle Stars Battlefront, it's an add on. You, you drive the X Wing in VR. For um, Call of Duty, they got that thing where you drive the jet in VR. So, do you like need the games or to purchase them? I don't know. They're really vague with the description of it, where if it's like a. F- I think. I don't know, because like the way they describe it for Star Wars, I don't think you need the main game, but I think for Call of Duty you do, because it's like an add on update for the game. Well- I don't know. I feel like it would probably be like a separate application. I don't think it would like be within the game. I don't know. It just depends if they want you to buy the game or not. That one mm. VR experience. Because, um, I mean, we're just seeing that a lot. Because, like, those two games are doing it. Um, Tomb Raider's doing it where it's just that one mode where you, like, walk around the house. Oh, yeah. Years. Um, oh, What's the other one doing? There's one more. I won't be too surprised that that house looks like the big house in Uncharted 4. <laughs> um... Shoot, I lost, I lost my thought. What was the, what's the other one that's doing it? Where it's just a VR experience on top of the main game. Uh, Doom? No, Doom's trying to get the whole game in VR, and they're doing it. Like, yeah, there is that VR demo, but they're not committed to putting that on PlayStation just yet. Yeah, it's like on the HTC or the Oculus. Isn't yeah, it? I mean, they want to put it on PlayStation. They said it at some point, but like right now, the plan is just... Yeah, I'd like to see it. Bethesda's support for VR. See, well, that would, would be get... cool, like, if we had Dishonored 2 in VR. Ooh. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, though. Like, Bethesda's actually trying to get their first-person games running entirely in VR. You know? Because, yeah. like, they have a working build of Doom. Like, they're really trying to get Doom going. And then, um, same thing with Fallout 4. Fallout 4 is coming to VR, the HCC, uh, what, next year? Yeah. Sometime next year. Um, so, they're really committed to, like, no, we want the full game, the full, the full triple A experience in VR, you mm-hmm. know? So they're really committed to it. So if a big developer like Bethesda can pull it off, then other developers will kind of look at it and say, well, maybe we can do that. Maybe, you know? just maybe. Just maybe. You know, if we're going to put in that effort. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, because that's what, because like I said, these, these triple A developers, they're just kind of focusing on the small experiences. Like, what he's doing with Star Wars, is Activision doing with that, you know? So it's just, because I don't know, it's it's one of those things where like I just don't know when we're gonna get that that push where we're going to see like the full first person shoot like like you could play the full Call of Duty campaign in VR, you know? Oh gosh, that'll be quite something. You know when we're gonna get that because shoot because I don't know because like that would be a big step but like we are way far off from doing like oh it's the multiplayer in VR. Oh yeah, no. you know because people people are so hardcore they want their lag and their inputs and their all this and that. Um, it would have to be its own mode basically like yes you can play multiplayer in vr but it's just you know like this server is vr only you know yeah it's like in a particular mode and there's no way that vr will be able to keep up with everyone else They've that's rather really interesting because the only developer that would have the most like leeway time to actually work with vr actually is sledgehammer because you know they finished advanced warfare back in 2014 so, and you know, like uh, Treyarch and well, and now Infinity War were busy at work doing their games that they had to put out just recently. So, I'm curious if maybe Sledgehammer had any time with uh, PlayStation VR at all. Yeah. Well, because I mean, it seems like uh, at least Activision is more, you know, akin to messing with Sony technology, you know, at least with stuff with PS Pro and all that. So, I'm curious if maybe next year's iteration of Call of Duty. Uh, Maybe has some VR features in some way. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing. We're already seeing it this year. Like, the new um, Call of Duty uh, Infinite Warfare is getting that VR experience thing, you yeah. know? So they are, Yeah, but I'm talking if, it's, if you could play the whole camp yeah. in VR. That's, that's what I mean, though. Like, it shows that they are showing some interest in VR this year. Uh, and then Sony does have that tie with Activision now over Call of Duty. Yeah, they really do. So it's one of those things where, like, yeah, come next year, maybe Sony can nudge, nudge, and be like, hey... You know, can you do something big with VR? You know, could you put 
the entire campaign at least in VR. Oh yeah, I'm sure like that talk with Sledgehammer has like happened like a long time ago because you know they finished Advanced Warfare such a while, a while ago now. So who knows? Like maybe what if you know they built the whole campaign from the ground up for, to it for it to be in VR? You know. And now they got the PlayStation Pro, so they get more you know <laughs> processing power to put with that VR. Hypothetically, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's uh, what they said at the thing. Like, look. This is Farpoint running on VR with a uh, Pro. Look how much better it looks. It's crisper. We don't have to drop the the uh, resolution as much when you run it on Pro. Hmm. So that is, that is a interesting thought. But I mean, you know, this is the same thing we say anytime though when new technology comes out is that they need support. You know, and if we can start getting AAA campaigns to support VR, then that's a huge step. That means VR can stay. You know because it shows the development's there. Because, I mean, that was the problem. We can name any Sony peripheral, but, uh, like, the big one, the one before this one, was the PlayStation Move control. Mm-hmm. Um, it was one of those things where everyone said, man, this thing would be cool, but why don't more first-person shooters use it? You know? Oh, yeah. Um, not too many did. Like, none of the Call of Duty supported it. None of the Battlefield supported it. Killzone and Resistance. Killzone, best first party. Mag supported it. That was first party. Um, like third party though, that's where you gotta get that support ad. And like third party was what, Bioshock Infinite? Uh, yeah, yeah, that was the first person that supported it. Yeah, it's quite a bummer that uh, Bioshock Remastered doesn't have uh, move support. <laughs> oh, am I the only person that's ever said that? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it, yeah, it's one of those things where I kind of forget that Bioshock Infinite even had move support because I never even tried it. Just to see, I, I it. thought it was something that Irrational Games wasn't a fan of putting. No, I don't remember them saying that, but like, no, it was. Um, was it Valve? Valve was the one that said move was stupid, and then they put it in Portal Two as uh, like an expansion. I mean, you can wait. Could you could you even play the campaign? I, I would. I would assume so. I don't see why they put the resources in just doing, you know. A whole expansion that uses it, and then the main game doesn't, because all you're I doing is applying the, applying the controls to the thing. No, I think I don't think you were able to play the campaign in VR. I think you were only able to play the sections of the mm. those downloadable content. That's weird. Um, gosh, two, gosh, oh man, I wish there was a three, but Valve never likes to do threes. Nope. But um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's like I said, it's weird because like when the move came out, it was like, yeah, why aren't all first person shooters supporting this? And only a hand, like most Sony, almost all Sony first party ones were doing it. Like we said, Mag, Resistance Three, um, Killzone all had it, but third party was kind of slim. Like Bioshock had it, Portal Two had it. Um, it was just kind of like, where's the more? You know, um, where's so, the more? Where's the more? Um, same thing with Vita. It was like, why aren't there more first person shooters on Vita? <laughs> I know. Two, two analog sticks, and there's only four. There's four. We can count every first version shooter on our hand. Killzone. What else? Oh, Resistance. Killzone, Retribution. Resistance, Borderlands. No, wait, now Retribution. Burning Skies. Burning Skies. Um, Call of Duty. Yeah, it's so, so disappointing. We only had that first wave and then nothing. No. So. This is something that Sony needs to just get ahead of with VR and be like, no, we don't want that to happen. We don't want all our support to be in the first year. Yeah. And they need to lock down partnerships and use them. Like they have a partnership with Activision. They need to lock it down and say, hey, we need you to support the VR more next year, the next Call of Duty. You know, make make camp- those worthwhile experiences. Make that campaign um, work. You know, make it where like, you know, make all racing games VR compatible from this point on. Just make sure, like, because you already got Grand Turismo, you already got uh, Drive Club, but, like, whenever the next Need for Speed comes out, whatever, make sure that that's VR compatible. Make sure, you know, when any other those racing games come out, make it VR compatible, you know? Mm-hmm. So then you get that support. And here's the thing, too, like, well, I mean, you could kind of say this for the move, but the thing about PlayStation VR is that it's not alone, you know, because there's PlayStation VR, there's... HTC Vive, there's um, Oculus Rift. So, like, there's three different ones, you know, so there's more incentive to, to kind of produce these games and then put them on different markets, different consoles, you know, systems right. or whatever. Um, where the move was kind of by itself. I mean, yeah, like a lot of people said you could probably port a lot of Wii games to PlayStation Move, 
you know, but how many of them were worth porting over? So, yeah. So that was kind of the thing that was like, the, like the handful of good Wii games did port over, like no, like no more heroes and stuff like that. Kind of got ported over to work and move on PlayStation. Um, but with this, is different. Like, like all these VR headsets are kind of coming at the same time. So all these games are developed at the same time, where it's like we're putting it here, putting it here. So that's something that Bethesda needs to needs to lock down too. That's something they said they don't want to happen. They don't want to develop it just for ACC or just develop it for Oculus. They wanted to work on all VR platforms. Which is excellent. You know, because, I mean, what's the point? What's the point of putting it on just one VR platform? There's no point. You know, because you because already each platform you put it on is only going to hit a small market, so you might as well put it on all three of the different VRs so it hits the bigger market. You know? Gain more people. Gain, Gain them more, more people. interested. This is why we don't have exclusive games no more. <laughs> Not really. You know, just except for first party. <sighs> Such a bummer. Such a bummer. But it's all all to be seen. They gotta get that support down. Um because it's soon. Month? Yeah, it's coming out within a month. Can you believe it? It is people are just going in and out on your end. Yeah, they really are. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a busy busy day. Busy night. <laughs> a very busy night. Busy People night. I go, go in and out. Mm-hmm. But um, speaking of VR, though, there's another game. Um, it was the, apparently uh, recently Sega teased that uh, a- Alien Isolation could receive VR support. Really? Yes. Um, because they said a while back that when uh, Oculus was first coming out, um, they did a demo of uh, Alien Isolation running on Oculus. Huh. And they said how it was such a crazy, uh, <laughs> scary experience. And then they're just like, oh, that's really cool. So it's one of those things where, like, they want to look back into it. Mm-hmm. That would uh, be cool. Yeah, so they said they said they do want to look into possibly bringing that back to VR, or at least kind of hinted at it. So, yeah, I mean, that'd be interesting. Um, but I just feel like at this point, they probably just going to do a sequel, you know? Yeah, I mean, do, you would have thought that they would have uh, started production, and they said that they would because Isolation did sell relatively well. Yeah, but I just feel like at this point, it's like, what are you going to do? This game's like how many oh. years old now? Two. Like two years old? I don't know if they're going to go and be like, oh, we're going to patch this two-year-old game to be VR compatible or, you know, plus the amount of work, it'd probably be a DLC you know, that adds new story and makes the main game VR compatible and you have to pay like Ten twenty dollars probably for that because it'd be a big commitment to develop. So like you're gonna go back and pay twenty dollar DLC for a game that's two years old, you know. So I think at this point it'd probably best to just be like, you know, hey look here's Alien Isolation two or whatever it'd be called, you know, and it's the whole game's VR compatible. You can play the whole thing in VR and then as a pre order bonus here's the first game with VR support, you know. Now that is a possibility. I don't know. I mean, it doesn't seem like uh, Creative Assembly is really you know, necessarily have gone full steam ahead on the sequel. I mean, they're pretty busy at work with Halo Wars 2 right now. Mm-hmm. So that's a little question of priorities. And then, you know, they got Total War going on. Yeah. So, well, I mean, it can always be another developer. Exactly. But... Yes, it could be for yeah. VR. Um, mm-hmm. Adding VR to those games. But, uh... Yeah, especially if it's just the first game. If it's just the first game getting VR support, then yeah, they've probably got some other developer working on that you know but i think if sega were to make a full-on sequel i think they would like creative assembly to come back probably because i mean i would like if the first game got vr support because that would encourage me to go back and actually play it and finish it finish it because like i don't know man like i wanted to like that game in isolation but like i played it for like two to three hours and then i got to this one point where I just kind of didn't understand what I had to do, and I was just kind of like, whatever. I just didn't even feel compelled to even, like, figure it out, and I just kind of stopped playing. I never went back to it. Yeah, I mean, I've always wanted to get around to that game. I mean, it was dirt cheap weeks ago. Yeah. But maybe in this Halloween sale, Uh there'll be something. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, so like I said, I was just... Like I, like I said, the VR support encouraged me to go back to it, but I think, I don't know, I just think the game's kind of old for it to kind of now get a big update like that. Well, I don't know. I mean, if we get old games that are getting PS Pro, granted, PS Pro updates are definitely different than VR, but I don't know. If we're getting, like, old 
PlayStation 4 games with PS Pro updates, then I don't think there should be no shame. Yeah, but PS, like you said, PS Pro updates aren't really much. They're just kind of like up res. It's not really like a big commitment to develop like VR would be. Yeah. Uh, but um, but yeah, good thing you bring that up. Because speaking of games that are getting uh, a game that isn't getting pro support. Oh. Yeah. So so we had many. Uh, articles popping up the past week or two of games that are getting pro support, like Shadow Mortar is going to get an update for pro support. Yes. Um, so for the Final, Mortar. Uh, Final Fantasy 15 is going to have pro support at launch. Um, you know all these games, uh, but they uh, CD Projekt Red developers of Witcher Three said that Witcher Three will not receive a pro update. Wow! They just said that um, they they just said that they don't really have time in their schedule to yeah. kind of like. Just go back to Witcher Three and kind of develop a pro update because they're they're busy working on their next game, Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. That's all hands on deck since the expansions yeah. are done. Um. So yeah, I mean, well, like a lot of people are pointing out too, like the pro system still upscales the game anyway. Like even without a pro update, mm. to a way to where it will still look better. You know, with your four K TV and your pro, but it's not taking the full advantage without a pro update. You know. Yeah. So I mean, Witcher Three it looks pretty good. But it can look better. Better. Because I know I'm going to be playing Witcher 3 again. Probably once I get my pro system and 4K TV just to see how it looks. The Witcher. And you want to see Witcher. those You want to see those glorious grunt cards? And the... Yeah, I can see all the, the refined details where I won't even have to zoom in to read the details. I can just see it. Ah, you won't have to, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so... He, but here's, here's, here's my problem with this report, though, from CD Uh-oh. Projekt Red. They said they don't want to devote time to it. Yeah. So they so in well, I guess I guess with um well, I guess with The Witcher it's different because it's a hundred hour epic, you know. So there's a lot maybe to go through processing, making sure every part of the game works with the with the pro, mm-hmm. you know. Because there was a report right after the pro the PlayStation Pro reveal event talking about um a sucker punch, it only took two people to develop pro mode for Infamous Second Son. You mean Infamous First or, Light or First Light? Yeah. Like, like first, I mean, I mean, first well, I mean is, it's different. I mean, you know, remember, First Light only had that small section contained Yeah, see, that's what I was going to say, though. Yeah, First Light's a smaller game, smaller world, so it probably didn't take as much. Cause that's oh, what he said. Oh, smaller, like, dude. That's, dude, do you think that, that nugget of, like, uh, space area is, like, a freaking, like, puddle in Witcher 3? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's not even exaggerating. <laughs> um, I mean, that's great, but you know, it's it's just first light, um, or as they rebranded it, whatever it's called now, first light or whatever. I forgot what it's called. Mm-hmm. No. no, it's not even a sizable comparison. That's Witcher. Witcher in is a league. We like we said, Witcher is in the league of its own. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's rather unfortunate that Witcher Three is not receiving. Pro support, but I understand that CEV projects are of best interest right now, especially for how fast this generation is going right now, to devote time to Cyberpunk. Mm-hmm. And who knows? Maybe Cyberpunk will receive PS4 Pro support out of the box. Oh yeah, by that point, it's going to probably be See? Sony's. Pro- Sony's probably going to enforce it by then, to where like pretty much all games need to have pro support. Let's hope so. At least for that was always, some of these third parties. Yeah, I mean that was always the rumored thing, right? In those reports, was that any game after this October needs pro support? Mm. You know, like they didn't confirm that, like on stage, saying that like every game from this point on will have you know pro support. They didn't say that on stage, but that was always like the rumored thing in the document saying that every game need, you know is required to have it after October. Yeah. I mean, that's what we're seeing, right? Because, I mean, Call of Duty's going to have it. Battlefield 1's going to have it. You know, Final Fantasy's going to have it. You know, all these, like, fall games are going to have it. Granted, these very big, heavy hitter games. I'm, I'm not too sure. I'm not too keen on if uh, other third parties will be ecstatic to bring, you know, their games to have pro support. That's the only thing I'm worried about, like... Yeah, well, I mean, that's, well, yeah, like, you're talking about, like, old games, like, games that are even really... Perhaps, or just, you know, games that won't even come out in the future that come from um, Ubisoft, or, like, well, I mean, Ubisoft, you know, they're going to have Watch Dogs 2, right, on uh, PS4 Pro. Yeah, that's Pro Support, because they showed it at the thing, like, this is Watch Dogs 2 in 4K. I'm trying to think, 
more of the middle tier uh, AAA games, even though there's not too many of those. Mm. Like the Deep Silvers of the World or something like that. So that's how I have pro support on their games. Like, is Agents of Mayhem or whatever the hell that game is called going to have pro support? You know, it would be funny if um, Dying Light got pro support. My God. Just so it can be called Dying Light Enhanced Pro Edition. Because it's already got the Enhanced Edition. They've got to throw a pro on top of it too now. I love Dying Light, dude. I want to... I love that game. Dude, If we, I think we need, if I ever get back to that game, you're going to need to get that complete edition so that we can get the DLC. I haven't finished the main game. It's not even that long, dude. Me and Chief, we, um, my friend, uh, we played it one sitting. That whole campaign. That's cool, man. Dude, it literally only took just steaming through that campaign like three hours. Mm. It was quick. From beginning to end? Well, like, all we did was story missions and nothing else. Yeah. 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 That last mission was frustrating, though. Oh. But, uh, yeah. And we'll see. Like I said, I just think, like I said, it's probably one of those things where Sony just didn't want to say it on stage, like, a direct promise or whatever of it, but that was what it always said in the document. I don't think they wanted to have that direct promise because I don't think it's a promise to begin with that it'll even happen. Because I, I think... Like you said, those big games, Activision um, and Ubisoft will support it, but I question other third parties if they're going to be willing to do it because I mean, if, it, if it even fits within their budget or time. Well, I mean, it, it kind it, of. For CD Project Red, it didn't seem like budget wise. It was time because they yeah. need to get but going that, on the project. But that's going back to an old game. I'm talking about games going forward. But I mean, it's not like it's just Sony that's doing this because Xbox One S also does the HDR. Support for yeah. game support, so these, so it's not like we're develop, it's not like they're just developing it for PS4. We got to develop this so it runs both uh, on Xbox One S and PlayStation 4 Pro. So it's just the future, man. <laughs> yeah, it's just that I'm not entirely convinced that all of the developers or all of them. I mean, it seems like maybe most of them are in it, but I'm not entirely sure if all of them are going to be on that. On that boat yet? Yeah. Um, of Let's course, see. the big ones are going to be able to do it because they have the time and resources to do it. It's just uh, I'm curious about the more the middleman. Middleman. The middleman. If they're if they're gonna be willing to do that, because again, it costs money. You know, I mean, and let's not forget. I mean, there were some reports that some some of these developers are not ecstatic about doing these. Uh, Hypothetical PS4 Pro updates because you know they cost time and do, doing more cert, you know, it's just not that fun stuff. I mean, yeah, it's it's necessary stuff for the for the game to get out, but it just adds some more work. It's like when they invented the color TV. It's like we don't want to film our shows and movies in color. Are you crazy? It's more work. Oh, it is more work. So, we'll see. Um, you know what's one game that's probably going to get pro support? What game is going to get pro support? Death Strand. Death Stranding. Yeah, Death Stranding. Well, I mean, probably. Ko- Kojima wants that technology. He wants that technology. He wants the he best loves, technology. He, he loves technology. <laughs> He's he was going... searching for it. You remember, he was searching for it. His little quest. His he'll, probably the most hilarious quest for technology. He went on the quest for for, <laughs> for stuff, you know. Yeah, he went on the quest for new technology. He new went. Technology. Remember, he had his little Twitter journey where, like, fourteen days, he was mm-hmm. <laughs> he went to various film studios and <laughs> hanging. <laughs> it's just funny because he's like on the hunt for new technology. I'm at Sucker Punch. Oh, I'm hanging out with uh, Nicholas Winding Riffin, and then he's with Mark Cerny. Well, I'm pretty sure he got that new technology from Mark Cerny because he's talking. He was like probably talking with them at dinner, and Mark Cerny's all like to be like, "Oh, we got the PS4 Pro. It's gonna be all this powerful stuff." And then Hideo Kojima almost falls asleep, and then uh, he's just all like, "Well, he's like, oh man, I forgot my baby at home." <laughs> he forgot his baby. And then he's like, he had to have Norman Reedus next to him because you know Norman Reedus, mm. he lo- he loves working with him. Yeah. Norman Reedus loves working with Kojima. Yep. Even though you probably he probably needs a translator always around him because I don't, I'm not sure Kojima can understand what he's saying. <laughs> so it's like, how does he direct him? Mm. Figure it out. But 
Death Stranding. What about Death Stranding? Well, they had an interview with Kojima about Death Stranding, ah. saying uh, basically we're asking, well, when's the game coming out? <laughs> when is the kid? And he said, well, it'll be out before the Tokyo Olympic Games. <laughs> In 2020. Yeah, that's four years from now. So yeah, within so we have a we have a launch window of four years within the next four years. Um, what do we think about this? I mean, do you think 2019? Do you think that's doable? I mean, they people have to really understand. Like this game has not even like really even started production. Like it, the engine has not even been settled. No, like they, like, I'm sure like the basic foundations of like thought of this game is happening. But yes. like, oh yeah, they know what they're making. They just haven't started yet. You know, yeah, that's the problem. So that, like they said, the that, that trailer we saw at E3, like that oh. was made for E3. Like that is not, you know, from anything already made. They just made that from scratch for E3. Yeah, like it's not even remote. Well, we well, we don't know if it's going to remotely or even look close to. But like, uh, well, who knows yeah. if it'll, who knows it'll look like that final? Yeah, that, like whether maybe, or not. Well, yeah, maybe what it'll look like. But Kojima already said that he hopes that 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 is in the game. Like what we see. <laughs> oh, we all hope. So we'll see. But yeah, so this game's a ways off and. Yeah, like, I'm not confident he's going to hit that date. So, like, even if he does announce, like, a release date for that, and then we got to anticipate then the delay, and then, you know, it'll get pushed. So, um, no, it's not going to hit 2019. I don't think so. Uh, I'm sure he'll try his hardest. I'm sure that's, like, a goal of his, of course. You know, always aspiring to, you know, at least have a, you know, that placeholder date, like you were saying, but... I don't believe for a second that that's that's gonna be happening. Yeah, three to four years though for this game, it's crazy. I mean, hell, I mean, we waited like a long time for like Metal Gear Solid Four to Five, and I, I think that's about the expected. I mean, if we're gonna expect a damn good game because of you know it's a they game, you know it's gonna be damn good. Um, then yeah, well wait. I think this one's all right. I mean, even though you know, I mean, I still haven't like plowed through all of Metal Gear Solid Five, but. Um, you know, I, I I love that game, and um, yeah. so, and you know, this is something entirely new for him because you know I'm glad that you know he had to again clarify that this is going to be an open world action adventure game, co-op, with co-op. So I'm very happy that he clarified that because we still have like some people like thinking it's a horror game because of PT, <laughs> the associations like, with that. I wonder who's going to be the second character. I wonder too. Because I feel like it's also going to be someone famous, right? Like you think they would just put enormous reasons some random person. Well, I mean that that it could that could be possible. I mean, uh, Hideo Kojima does like finding uh, some unknown talent sometimes. No. Um, maybe that unknown talent could be you know someone that's new to like all of this and could be a catalyst for the player, um, which could be cool. But I mean, who knows? We don't even know if you're playing as normal release. I mean, I would assume so, but I don't know. I mean, it, it, sometimes, never, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes this stuff doesn't happen. You know, sometimes you it know. can just be. Well, in Call of Duty, you can't play as Kit Harrington. No, you fight him. You can't play. You can't play as Kevin Spacey in Advanced Warfare. No. There you go. But uh, you can play as Troy Baker. Yes, you can. You can play as Troy Baker in a lot of games. A whole lot of games. A whole lot of games. Third and first person. It's easier to say what games you don't play as Troy Baker than to say games you do play as Troy Baker. Exactly. But yeah, Death Stranding, still very mysterious. Still very surface level, not even surface level details. Yeah. Which is exciting. But, you know, this will be in the back of my mind every single conference I raised by now. Like, oh, where was it? Where Give me another one of those. Where is it? Like Batman. Like Kojima, you would know this is too early. Why did you have to do that? You just released Metal Gear Solid Five last year. <laughs> well, you know, I could get that hype train going, and, and it's all because of the, the, the Konami stuff, and then all that. You know, yeah. I guess you know he had to come on swing, and then you know, let's not forget he had the YouTube video with the announcement, of the PlayStation partnership, and all that, mm-hmm. which is all great. Don't get me wrong, but at the same time, you know, it yeah. it, 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 it kind of uh, I think it would have been just as effective to lay low. 
too, and then have an announcement. But you know, I guess with all this Konami stuff, Konami. Kojima wanted Kojima wanted to get full swing. Mm-hmm. Speaking of which, he did comment on uh, Metal Gear Survival. He did. Yes. Um, somebody asked him about it on Twitter or something, and he said, "I'm not involved with Metal, uh, Metal Gear Survive at all, and I don't know anything about it." Uh, personally speaking, Metal Gear Solid is espionage to me, a uh, political fiction. Uh, he later said that the Metal Gear games are about political fiction and espionage. Where do zombies fit in that? Ooh, when you have a guy that has all this zany and wacky things in his franchise, and he says that zombies doesn't fit in it, then I guess you know something's wrong. But there was zombies in Metal Gear Solid V. <laughs> Sort of. Uh, technically. The husk were zombie-like. Or whatever they're called. I think they're called husks. But this is full-on zombies. Well, they're monster things. And then, like... I don't know. Cause I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to, like you said, kind of point the facts. That Metal Gear Solid franchise is, like you said, pretty zany. A lot of crazy stuff in there. Yes, that's I what mean, I was pointing out. Yeah, but the thing about Metal- a guy that yeah, put but the all thing- sorts of stuff in Metal Gear. But the thing about Metal Gear Solid, the main series, anytime something weird comes up, he's always has some type of, like, science fiction explanation behind it, you know? Right. Like, oh, that one guy's a vampire. And then it's like, no, he's not a vampire. He just has nanobites in his system, lets him regenerate, and it makes his skin pale, and he drinks blood just because he's crazy, not because he needs it. That's right. And then the cloning and the rapid aging. Cloning and rapid aging, and it's like, um... Telling you to insert the, the, another disc and fourth and, wall breaking. The meta, yeah. And then <laughs> Peace... Well, in Peace Walker too, you can go hunt uh, dragons. Oh, yeah, that's right. I kind of forgot about that. Yeah, they were like the bonus missions. They're probably... I don't, I don't even know if I even played them, so I don't remember if, how they explain if it's just like a simulation or what. But uh, there was these missions where you go hunt the dragons from Monster Hunter. Really? Yeah. From, that's what it was. It was like some crossover thing where it's like Monster Hunter and it's like the dragons... Hmm. from that so i'm just like okay like there's crazy stuff in there and then with metal gear survive too like they keep stressing like this is not canon this is like some alternate reality thing you know which it is yeah they get sucked into some portal and they they fight monsters i'm like okay i think that's just kind of the line he's trying to draw is that everything he does like all the crazy stuff he's done with the franchise at least he has science to back it up you know, mm-hmm. where this game is more just like, there's no it's happen- sign. It, it, it's just happening. It's just happening. Like, here's monsters. Just fight them. You know, it's Stranger Things. They upside go, down. They go the upside down. But there's no science behind this Metal Gear either. Yeah, it's just. You don't, oh, you don't have a high school teacher telling you. Yeah. It's oh, wait, middle school teacher. Yeah, it's just some random portal opens and sucks them all up and they fight monsters. So, Yeah. But Metal Gear Survive. I mean, yeah. that's got to be saying something. It's coming from Kojima that's made all sorts of zany and wacky things. So, yeah, <laughs> that means something. It means something. But like I said, it's just I don't know. I mean, you got to think though. He's probably pretty bitter about the whole thing in general. Yeah, and you have some people that did work on Metal Gear Solid Five on this. Very select people, I think. Yeah. Just basically reusing the assets mm-hmm. and just doing whatever they want. Whatever they want. It seems like they're trying to just make people angry. <laughs> well, we'll see how this turns out. Who knows if it'll end up being a good game or not. I don't know. No. I mean, the gameplay... Yeah. Well, yeah, let's talk about a little bit of the extended gameplay for, I guess, a brief period of time. I mean, the full gameplay came out. I mean, I watched it. Um, Did it look good? <laughs> it, it looked very like what you think. It's not anything, <laughs> you know... Well, it's not, this, it's nothing jumped out at all, you know, other than the zombies. But um, this doesn't look like it's going to be like an Umbrella Chronicles thing. No, what's that, not, what's that game called? Umbrella it's Corpse. Not gonna, it's not going to win people over on this idea at all. It's just very what you expected. No, it's, like, but do you know what I'm talking about the Umbrella Corpse game? Well, yeah, but yeah, not like, even that. No, it's I not even that it. game existed until it came out. Yeah, and then it came out. I was like, "What the hell is this?" I look it up online. It's like it's a. Uh, online uh, shooter with just Resident Evil characters. I was like, what the hell is this? And it's supposed to be really bad. And I'm like, whatever. Whatever. Yeah. But, but yeah, no, it's just... No. <laughs> just no, man. I think that's what this should all be called. Just, just, no. But, um... 
I don't know. I didn't see the video. <laughs> it was like maybe 20 minutes long? Mm. 20? 30? 20. I don't remember. But I, I, because I felt like watching something Japanese. <laughs> because I do miss Japan. And Not enough I to watch even, anime. I, no, no, no. Hang on. No, I even had the thought of watching anime again. Oh. I, I know. I think it, it, it honestly kind of scared me. <laughs> um, because, like, I was watching, like, these people playing these VR experiences, anime VR experiences. I was like, I think this is what might get me back. <laughs> I mean, but, it's just you love cartoons and yes, you I, love Japan, but you don't like yes. anime, the combining of those two things. Well, like, I, you, it was, it's like something I used to like. And,. Like, even today, like, I still, I mean, I, I like the anime one-off, like, movies that, you know, it's just self-contained, um, not really a series. I'm just talking, like, things that are, like, a long series. Like, freaking, like, I had a friend tell me that Naruto is still going on, which I did not even know. I thought Naruto was over. No. The, but, the, but apparently it isn't. No, the cartoon's not over. The books are over, though. Oh, okay. Um... But no, I I think anime that like has a place for me like probably like later in my life. But just like right now, <laughs> just just no, just like no. That, you know, like unless you know if there's a another sort of movie that kind of gets me back in that's self-contained. You know, well maybe when Ghost in the Shell comes out, yes. And if you like the movie, you'll be like, whoa, this movie was cool, and then you realize, oh wait, it's based on anime. Exactly. <laughs> You go watch some anime, and then you just keep watching more and more. Because I do like Scarlett Johansson. And the movie does look neat. Even yeah. though I kind of forgot who the director was for this one. I don't think you want me to tell you. Yeah. No, no, no. It was a Wikipedia. It was a good old Wikipedia uh, look that, that had to make me go, oh, no. <laughs> I, was like, I, I was like, oh, I thought it was going to be like an accomplished like, director or something. <laughs> Because of how cool it looked yesterday with the teasers, like the cinematography looked really cool and everything. But then I look at the director, I'm like, oh, oh, well, why did did Paramount? Did they have like no money? <laughs> was was like, not, I almost because Dennis Milne was doing Blade Runner two, I would have thought maybe he did this for some reason. Maybe <sighs> he should have done this movie. He should, he should have done that movie. I mean, it, it goes to the shot. But Blade Runner 2, in the makings right now, it seems like it's going to be probably an incredible movie, though. Probably. Because you got him. You got all. You got this really cool cast. You got Roger Deakins doing this cinematography. Ooh. Like, already. It, no. It's not going to suck. <laughs> all, all of his mo- past, like, four movies have been critically acclaimed and liked by many. So, Blade Runner 2. Like, no doubt, it's going to be good. Okay. And I'm excited. Well, speaking of movies and doubting over their quality, <laughs> we had a little update on the Assassin's Creed movie this week. Yeah, Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed's coming in December. Mm-hmm. It's getting here. Oh, very um, close. And, you know, there was those reports a while back that what well, the movie's broke up into, what, 60, 40%, 60? Yeah, quite a ratio. 60% present, 40 in the past. Mm. Um. Well, it was announced this past week that all the scenes in the past will be in Spanish. Oh, uh-huh. so I guess it will be considered a Spanish-British film, kind of. Yeah, so all the scenes in the past, they'll be speaking Spanish, so there'll be subtitles for you to read <laughs> during that part, um, which is fine. I mean, they said they're doing it because, obviously, you know, they want to be all authentic. You know, they're in Spain during this time. They would speak Spanish. I'm like, yeah, sure, that makes sense, but that does go against the video game's uh, lore because in the games they explain that the animus can translate uh, Eng- uh, languages. But then again, I mean, wasn't there a lot of subtitle reading in like Ezio's trilogy? I don't remember. I mean, yeah, there was, I mean, there was well, a yeah, lot. there was that one point in the game, like in the. Ooh, Assassin's Creed 2 or Brotherhood one of those games the the machine was messing up where it's like it wasn't translating so the words were just coming in yeah. normal in Italian you had to read it but for the most part it's supposed to be um, translated 
because they said, oh, they, whatever you say gets translated into Italian, whatever they say gets translated into English or whatever the language of the user is. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it kind of delves into a little more, but I guess for the sake of movie storytelling, I guess they kind of want to get you more immersed in it. It's fine. Um, yeah. It kind of helps it stand out a little bit more. I'm sure uh, Spanish speakers out there won't notice the difference when they watch it in their respective country, <laughs> so it won't matter to them. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I, it, it's fine. I think it's cool. Get to see Michael Fassbender speaks in Spanish. Okay, he can speak so many languages. Oh yeah, he can. Can probably cursing them too, <laughs> as always. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, I mean, it just show confidence in like the direction of the director. Like he's committed to this idea, you know, for it. Please, it needs to be good. I can't. Uh. <sighs> But, but like it was funny because like Fox, it was either Fox or Ubisoft. One of the two said the other day like they're not even really expecting to make a whole lot of money off Assassin's Creed. <laughs> like we don't look at this as a as a as a huge money maker. We're just doing this for, I don't even know. I guess for franchise starting. I don't know. Mm. I don't anticipate it being a large money maker. I mean, the problem is like by itself, Assassin's Creed should make a lot of money. But the problem is it's coming out a week after. Star Wars. Uh huh. And it's coming out on December twenty first. Like ten other movies come out that day. Mm. So, oh, December is jet packed. Yeah, so it's just the problem is House Creed is in such a tight spot that's kinda hard for it to make a whole bunch of money. Mm. You know? Yeah. But we'll see. I'm just hoping for you know, I'm just hoping for quality because we because we keep saying it, we keep saying it over and over on the show. We just want a good quality video game movie so that way it shows the industry, hey, this is how you're supposed to make them. You know, but it certainly doesn't matter because even with talent that works on these that we've already gotten demonstrated this year, that none of them had hit the mark. Yep. Warcraft was lame. Ratchet and Clank lame. Angry Birds. Yeah. yeah. Um, what else have we got? I mean, that's pretty much it. But you know, just with those, at least the two Ratchet and Clank and that alone, just like kind of like put my hopes down. <laughs> I mean, Warcraft was supposed to be at least decent, but it wasn't. It was. It was so lame. Yeah. It was out on digital this week, and I'm just like, whatever. Whatever. Like, well, go Dun- away. Like, well, I don't, it doesn't even need it. Well, Duncan Jones is, is filming his new movie next week. He's starting production or filming or whatever. Which one is that one? Is it? His next movie is another uh, sci fi film. It's going to be called uh, Mute. Darn, I would have thought it was just like a, a simple, like, romantic comedy. Like, I always wanted to go back to the simple romantic comedy. No, it sounds like a smaller scale sci fi film. Like Moon. Well, that's what he said. It's going to have ties to Moon. So, like, a spiritual successor in a way? I don't know, because he says Sam Rockwell is in the movie. But he didn't say... So I don't know if he's going to be his character from Moon. But he said the movie has ties to Moon, and then went on to say that Sam Rockwell is in the movie. So, I is he going to be his character from the first from the movie? Is this, like, one of those where, like, it's a sequel, but it's not, like, a direct sequel? Kind of like what... 10 Cloverfield Lane was, you know? Yeah, let's see. It's kind of a sequel, but not like a direct sequel to Cloverfield. So disappointing because Moon is such a fantastic movie. That's what really got my hopes up so much for Warcraft. I was like, mm-hmm. Duncan Jones could have been it for this. <laughs> it simply wasn't. Like, the directing was also just another flaw in Warcraft, but <laughs> just. just, just a, but I think, like, Assassin's Creed, the director, you know, he. I really like Macbeth. 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 M-A-C. So, I think there's even more potential there because I think it's from an even more accomplished filmmaker. So I just I just feel with Assassin's Creed though they're letting this director kind of do what he wants because already because yeah. already he's using he's using uh, his cast his two actors from Macbeth. He's using that he's same, worked with in the past. That he's worked with. He's using the same cinematographer from that movie. Uh-huh. He's doing all the past scenes in Spanish. Yep. You know, like they're not doing the safe 
Hollywood movie here. Like yeah. it looks like they're really following this director's <sighs> vision. Oh, like this is like a, he has control then. Like I just hope like things don't end up in the cutting room floor or whatever, or, or editing gets in the way of like you know where it's just like lame. I mean, you would think we would have got another trailer by now, right? <sighs> I mean, we're, uh, what, three months away from this movie coming out? Okay, I think we're due for another trailer mid-October. Like, around New York Comic Con. Probably, yeah, New York Comic Con. Yeah, I think, I think that's what I, that's what we're doing. I'm like, you know what you would be, because you know why I like my trailers. But, um, you know, I mean, we got the Assassin's Creed trailer, like, in the summer. Yeah, I know, but we've already got, what, two to three Star Wars trailers, and that comes out? Yeah, but we're, we're in the fall now. We just, we just approach the fall, so I think... Yeah, I mean, a trailer, you know, is imminent. It's, it would be kind of... Um, hopefully a better edited trailer. So, you know, I would hope that's in the cards. Yeah. So, so then you can get people excited. I don't know what movie it would debut with, though, in October. Uh, what's, a, what's a Fox movie coming out in October? <sighs> no, or any movie. Birth of a Nation's Fox, and that's October. Yeah, I'm sticking nation. on that. I guess. Could I mean it's Fox? Um, Tim Burton's new movie comes out next week. That's Fox. No, no. Um, re- forget it. It's just release it online with any other movie. It doesn't need to be with a Fox movie. It yes, it does. <laughs> doesn't matter. It's how marketing works. You premiere it with some movie. It's tied to your own studio already. Anyway. We are at the one hour mark, so we might actually be able to end this episode early. Well, um, trying to think because there were a couple other big things like mini topics. Um, I know a lot of people are disappointed with the Fallout and Skyrim no mods on PS4. Huh, but but guess what? Farming huh. Farming Simulator 2017 is getting mod support on PS4. Hmm. They confirmed that. They confirmed that on their Twitter. The Farming Simulator guys, the developers are like, yep, mod support is coming to the PS4 version of Farming Simulator. I remember there was this thing like kicked around, but like it was never like confirmed or anything. Like if like hypothetically Sony wanted Bethesda to QA every single mod in Fallout. Probably. I mean But we don't but we don't know if that's true or not. Well, that's the problem with the situation. That's a, it's a lot of like you know, he said, he said, that kind of thing. You know, we're like, Bethesda kind of got ahead of it first and said, oh, mods aren't coming to PS4 because Sony doesn't want to do them right or something like that. Mm. But then yet, right after that, uh, the guys who are doing Farming Simulator said, well, no, we're getting mod support on PS4, you know? So, it's so just like, want- Sony is letting, like, quote, unquote, a developer, I mean, you know, even though Farming Simulator is a very different game from Fallout 4, yeah. letting them... Have mods in their game. Yeah. So it's not that. It's just Bethesda didn't want to do it a certain way. And that probably had to do with QA testing and, you know, approving mods and stuff like that, you know? Because mm. you look at something like Farming Simulator where, like, eh, it's a rated E game, smaller thing. It's probably the mods might not get too big, you know, on that. Less- yeah. And, like, already, like, people need to remember that already the mods, like, even on Xbox One, are a bit limiting. Yeah. Like, you can't do anything, like, super crazy on it. Mm-hmm. Like, the PC ones far out leave, oh, yeah. like, what any of the mods on console have. I mean, great, it's nice to have, but um, I just, I don't know. Like, for me personally, just personally, even if this were to even happen, I would not even touch it. Like, yeah, if I had to be it's... honest. Yeah, um, it's weird, and I don't know, man. Just Bethesda. Bethesda has a really big love hate relationship with Sony. Yeah, like it's it's ridiculous the relationship between those two companies. Mm. You know, where it's kind of like at first it was like we don't want to put stuff on Sony, then they put stuff on Sony, then it wasn't working right, then they then they kind of try to make it all nice and promote their stuff on Sony, but then they like backhand them and like saying like, oh, we're finally getting a console that can support true VR or something like that when they're talking about the Scorpio. Yeah, you know, and it's like, what, what, what the hell does that mean? And then now this whole thing where Bethesda kind of came out first and said, "Oh no, it's Sony's fault. We can't put mods out." Yeah, or whatever. And then Sony never like—I don't think Sony did a response to that. They were just kind of like, "Whatever," you know. It's a little odd. 
And then, you know, even let's even look at their um, olden days. I mean, they brought like always the older Elder Scrolls games was on PC and uh, Xbox, the original. Um, I know Elder Scrolls 3 was on Xbox. I don't know about the first two. Uh, so, you know, they never bought any of their games on PS2, which is a bit odd when you think about it back in the day, huh? Yeah, like who? They never brought it. One of the <laughs> top selling consoles, they never brought it over. Yeah, you like thought, right. Yeah, PS2 had all the exclusives back in the day. Because yeah. it's not like the original Xbox was like powerful than PS2. The one that some people praise was like the GameCube. <laughs> but um, well, PS2 wasn't a slouch, at least in the power department back then. Yeah. So, you know, that's a bit odd that, you know. Bethesda wouldn't bring any of their software to the PS2 at all. Mm. Yeah, but that's just weird, man. I just, I don't know. But then they, like I said, but then the other day they were talking about how they do want to bring, you know, like Doom and stuff to PlayStation VR. You know, it's just like, I, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't know. You know, I really think it's probably it's on both parties for, the, for it. Um, yeah, I mean... They, they well, they did say too in Bethesda's statement saying that they are going to continue kind of finding ways around it or whatever to try to get <laughs> mod support on PS4 or yeah. try to reevaluate it. But I think that's what it is. I think it's just a both side type thing. I think Bethesda wanted to do it a certain way, yeah. And Sony was like, fine, but you have to QA and approve all the mods but yourself. But it's just strange and, though because like even when you have a mod that like breaks your game, you can just like uninstall it though. Like it's something that you can take out. It's not something that you you have permanently in. Like you compl- you like make a complaint to Sony, like, oh, my game's broken because of mod. But that's the thing, though. It's a third party game running on Sony's hardware, and some of those things are like, so who's who's who should be responsible to QA test these mods? You know, no one can do that. That's what I'm saying, though. Like somebody has to do it, right? And then Sony's like, well, we're not going to do it, and Bethesda's like, shit, we don't have time. We're not going to do that. Kind of work on that other school six, you know. Yeah, so it's kind of like mm-hmm. both at play. But then, like I said, then the farming simulator was just all like in the same week. Like, well, we're getting mod support, so Sony didn't deny us, you know. And I don't know how they're doing theirs differently. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know. Trying to so- think of, huh? It's so weird too, because like Sony, Sony and and Xbox, or Sony and Microsoft, were they're both doing this thing where they're trying to be more like, like we want to bridge the gap between console and PC. Yeah, PC. You know, yeah. You know, Microsoft's doing it really hard by you know including PC copies. <laughs> the crossplay, yeah, the crossplay. You know, when you buy a game on Xbox, you get it on PC. If you buy it on PC, you get it on Xbox. So we're really trying to you know bridge the gap and do crossplay and all that. Yeah, and, Sony, really and Sony's just all like, well, we're doing. You know, we have cross-play in some of our games, and Sony did cross-buy first with uh, Portal yeah. 2. Portal 2, you, you bought it on PS3 and you got it on Steam. It just never took off, you know, the Steam connectivity. But it's like you never see Sony exclusives on PC or anything like that to that extent. No. So it's just kind of like Sony's, it's like Sony was all like, we're trying to, you know, provide more for PC, but not really. But it's You're, so strange because... You have Microsoft, which, you know, is a... Com- well, Sony also makes computers. A uh, very much limited line. But, you know, Microsoft, you know, Windows. You yeah, know, they, they have the whole they, operating system. Yeah, they have the whole operating system. Sony doesn't have that infrastructure whatsoever. Uh, if so, they have a very small slice of that market. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah, Microsoft's, yeah. you know, a but huge that, corporation. They have... That- but that's always the thing. It's it's always been like this weird kind of Sony and Microsoft. It's it's always like it's always like Sony kind of like throws out some type of little idea. Yes. And it doesn't like catch on and then like Microsoft kind of picks it up and like expands the crap out of it. Yeah, to see to see if it maybe may or may not stick with people. Because like uh, okay, like yeah. for example, let me give an example. So like Sony Sony back on PS2 did the eye toy. Yeah, you know, and it did this thing where like, oh, play the games using your body or whatever, and only like maybe ten games got produced for it. Yeah, um, and then a whole generation later, Microsoft's like, we've invented this camera controller where you control the games from using your body, and I'm like, this happened last generation on PS2. But then, I mean, well, not that we can entirely put the Wii success on that, but. But, you know, part of it must have been from, you know. Yeah, well, part of it was, yeah, the Wii's motion controls. And they said, okay, well, how do we get around that? Like, we want to be different. Like, no controllers at all. Yeah, yeah, no. The controller. 
You are but, yeah, exactly. You are the you controller. are the controller. But the problem was what they invented was exactly what the PS2 already had. This, I mean, a much better version of it, yeah. but it's still the same thing. It's a camera, and you just move next, in front 1. of it. 2.0, 2.0, and then, and then yeah. The so there was that. Then Sony kind of did the whole thing with Steam Connect, where it was like, look, if you buy Portal 2 on PS3, you get a Steam code to get it on PC, and you can cross-play between PC and PS3. And that was it. That was the only game that had it. And now look yeah, at Yeah, never caught on and then go on to other Steam titles that came on PS3. No Counter-Strike Global Offensive, because that game received a ridiculous amount of um, support. No, it didn't. Mm-hmm. So that's disappointing. Yeah, and then now Microsoft, that's their whole platform now, is like all Xbox games you buy, like all first-party games you buy with us, you also get the Windows version of it. You know? And they're all cross-play. You can cross-play them all together. So right. I'm like, that's something Sony tried and didn't work, and that's something Sony should have capitalized on was you know more that Steam Connect, where it was like you know crossing over. I think what happened was, though, was because you know the week Portal 2 came out, the Portal 2 was that first game that supported that. You know the the cross play between uh, Steam and PS3 and the the Steam cross buy. What happened was though that was also the week of that Sony hack. Yes. So for the first month, no one was playing Portal Two online, or so come for like or any of that. But I mean, like no one was playing Portal Two online. No one was using the cross play for a whole month because of the Sony hack. Then once it came on, everybody was already playing Portal Two on PC, so they didn't even bother going back to the PS3 version. So. Valve probably got pissed off at that and said, well, screw this. We're not doing this anymore. We're not, you know, providing any more Steam Connect or Steam Cross Buy or anything, you know. Well, on top of that, there are really no Steam games released since then. Or, yeah. like, it, maybe it didn't even have to be Steam games. Maybe it could have been, like, other games, hypothetically, but... Well, no, Valve games. Oh, Valve games. Yeah, not Valve, Steam games. Yeah. A lot of games can be on Steam, but Valve <laughs> makes Steam. Game. Yeah. Yeah, I meant Valve games. Valve developed games. Yes. There you go. How about redo the orange box, but on PS4? Yeah. I actually have it run well. <laughs> Throw in like Half-Life 1 or something, just to get the whole Half-Life. Oh, yeah. But then it's going to make people freak out that it's some sort of catalyst for like Half-Life 3 to come. Yeah, yeah. That's like, like, the whole, that's like what's going on with Red Dead Redemption. Right now. Yeah, because of the Red Dead Revolver trophies. But then again, guys, all the other Rockstar games are on PS4. It's not like a call that, oh, Bully 2 is happening, Grand Theft Auto 6. Well, Grand Theft Auto 6 is happening. But. Yeah, but you, you know what I mean. It's not a call to action. Yeah. Yes, a Red Dead 2 is happening. Some maybe even thought this year, but it's way too late for an announcement like that to even happen. Oh, yeah, it comes out in December. They announced it like tomorrow, and it comes out in December. <laughs> well, honestly, for a game like that, that could happen. But knowing Rockstar, no, they need to build some hype for that before that happens. But Red Dead 2 could be that kind of game to do that. <laughs> I mean, holy shit, you get no preview cycle? No. It just it, it just comes out. It's just here, man. It comes out in two months. <laughs> And, it, and it's like a remarkable game. You know, we, like, we didn't have to worry about like seeing trailers or getting hyped up. We get we get blown away. <laughs> but then again, I mean, what benefit much did that even really bring the Fallout? I mean, well, it did, you know. But at the same time, I mean, Fallout Four wasn't all that well beloved, really, by many. It's not like it wasn't Fallout Three, but you know, I mean, it was like it's a well liked game. I don't know. <laughs> but it did certainly help not drag out the preview cycle for Oh yeah. I would have hated to sit there and just watch Fallout 4 for like two two, three years, you know, just going through that preview cycle. But again, we didn't know of the game's existence for a long yeah, time. Yeah, but like I wouldn't have hated to just constantly see To see it? it. Yeah, to constantly keep seeing it like at E three, like here's Fallout Four. Here's Fallout 4. Here's like a new another game. Here's a new game. Yeah, here's a new here's a new demo. You know, like how many times do you think we would have saw some like video at E3 like explaining how the fucking um settlement system works like when you're building stuff? God. He, like I could not put up seeing a video of that over and over for like 2 years. I can't even put I can't even put up uh seeing that for like 3 seconds in the game. <laughs> so you can only imagine um, well, I mean, I was thinking like it would be like the No Man's Sky situation then. 
like constantly seeing the game all the time. Yeah. I'm just kind of being annoyed. But yeah. That's all I can really think about though. Mm-hmm. This week. This week. Um Yeah, I'm not f- feeling really well. Yeah. Uh, catching a cold. It seems like or something. I, I have no idea. I apologize to everyone that people keep entering and leaving. It's a very busy day at the school. Mm-hmm. I'm in the downstairs of the dormitories. And I got a little peek inside the little apart- main person apartment. looks pretty nice. Mm. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. What, what, uh, what else do you, you got? That's it. Because it seems like someone keeps peeking in and out of here, so it seems like someone wants to like chill here. So like I feel bad, so I think I might want to leave. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I guess that's it. That's it for my news and all that. So I guess we can start wrapping up. So uh, yeah, so with that, this has been the PSPS Place Below Podcast. I'm your host Koti, uh, PS and Bye Boys. My host here is Andrew Arenas. Double is everyone have a fantastic week. Uh, be safe. Be nice. Um, eat healthy somewhat uh, you gotta go to Taco uh, Bell and go in that place just, to VR just, just, just don't go vegan okay <laughs> um, cause I don't know like someone said like, I don't know what's worse than a vegan <laughs> literally nothing uh, but yeah thanks everyone for for listening um, I do want to unfortunately state that we did get your questions, but the PlayStation app has been giving me trouble lately, so we will get to those next week. We have we had like two, mm. but they were kind of big topics, so we can talk about them next week mm. because I think they would still be relevant unless anything huge happens, which I kind of doubt. <laughs> well, yeah. um, we could talk about 4.0 or whatever because I got to try it out for a little bit. But mm. won't get into that right now. But uh, talk about that. And uh, but yeah. Yep. Oh my gosh, I'm tired. Yeah, yeah, a big yawn coming over a sudden. But um, but yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, thanks for listening. And uh, yeah, go play your games this weekend. Batman episode two came <laughs> out this week. Oh, whoa, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Batman episode two of the Telltale series came out this week. I haven't played it yet. Check that. Wait, do you, get, do you get the season pass for it? No, we talked about this. There was no advantage to getting the season pass. Yeah, but you, you just put it out all at once. No, I just pay the five dollars when I feel like it. Yeah, when I feel like it. Yeah, I mean, would you buy the season pass? You're not there. Uh, no. No. So I there won't. you go. But yeah, so that's there. Like Bioshock Collection. I've been playing that last past week. The first uh, one. Yeah, I've been playing through the first one. Nice. So good. Um, so yeah, you go play that, go play Batman. Um, but yeah. But uh, yeah, thanks for listening and hopefully we'll see you guys next week. And Bye. Click.